Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another manga review. And once again, we're going to be taking a look at Fairy Tale with Volume 7 from Hiro Mashima, which sees the continuation of the Phantom Lord arc, which we started briefly at the end of Volume 6. Actually, Volume 6 was mostly the end of the Galuda Island arc, which was mostly Grey's backstory and how they were able to defeat Deliora because Orr actually kept her spirit weakening the beast for over 10 years, and when they unsealed the ice, the demon was no match and just disintegrated. And then we saw that Grey and Leon sort of reconciled, and it appears Leon is going to go on a, a path of redemption and join the Lamia Scale Guild. But after that ended, our heroes made their way home, and they saw a fairy tale attacked. And the Master was hesitant to do anything, because they have the inter-guild conflict laws. So the fact that Phantom Lord struck them first, you know, meant nothing to the Master, because he didn't want to get involved in these, these senseless battles. But as we got further into the story, we saw that Levy, Jet, and Droy were attacked by Phantom Lord and hung up on trees like crucifixes with the Phantom Lord emblem. And that was the snapping point for Master Makarov, so he assembled his forces to launch an all-out assault on Phantom Lord. And the two guilds are pretty evenly matched because they mentioned that Makarov and Master Jose of Phantom Lord are both wizard saints equal in magical strength and caliber. And... Phantom Lord also has four S-Class wizards who you see on the cover here. We actually met Juvia and Sol, who she's the water wizard and he's the earth wizard. And this group is known as the Element Four. And, you know, this guy's fire and he's air. And it's pretty funny because I read Eden Zero first and you see that Mashima likes to bring a lot of things from his previous works into his current works. So that's pretty cool. But uh, this came out years and years before Eden Zero. But anyway, let's jump right into this. It ended on a cliffhanger of Juvia and Soul capturing Lucy, and they called her Lucy Hartphilia by her full name. And I guess there's some sort of collateral in capturing her. So also it ended with our heroes converging on Phantom Lord, getting ready for all-out assault, even the Master joining in the battle. And <laughs> it starts right away with, with Elfman here, Elfman Strauss. And as he attacks, his little catcher is, I'm oh, a man, a man, a man. And he's known as Beast Arm Elfman, and he can turn his arm into any particular beast that he's defeated in the past. And what I really like about this series so far is most of the, the volumes in the story arcs revolve around a certain character. Like in the beginning, it was larger around Natsu and, and Lucy. The last arc was around Grey. And this actually delves into Elfman's past, the sort of minor character, as well as Lucy's past. So I really like that. So Elfman's attacking, and then we learned also that, that uh, Phantom Lord has Gajiel, who is the Iron Dragon Slayer, and he's there to rival Natsu as the Fire Dragon Slayer. So he makes quick work of Elfman, and they go back and forth here. And, you know, Elfman's pretty strong in his own right, but nothing to Gajiel. And like I said, he can use Iron Dragon magic. So he turns his, his arms into, like, iron clubs and just beats the ever-living hell out of him. And Natsu stands up to Gajiel and getting ready to fight. And that's just a friendly hello before the real dragon fight begins. And Master Makarov is headed right for Jose. And we haven't really got a, a full look at Jose's face yet. He's just like the sinister wizard with like almost like a witch's hat on. And he looks like he has wings. He's the phantom in the night. But there's his face right there. And like I said, we, we learned that he's a wizard saint. So he's very powerful. And he actually has Lucy captured. So Makarov's hesitant to attack because he sees his, his own guild, guildmate there is, is lying on the floor, helpless, unconscious, all tied up. And then he summons this Phantom Lord Element 4, Arya of the Great Sky. So he's the sky wizard of the Element 4. And for whatever reason, he's crying. Like, look at his face. Tears coming down his face there. I'm so sad. And... What he does is he completely overwhelms Makarov and sucks the magic power completely from him. And Makarov's lying helpless on the ground there. Everyone's looking, no, what do we do? And Jose says, Arya's magical power is to make others' magical powers disappear into thin air. In other words, it is magic that brings nothingness. I'd say this is a total victory for us as he has Lucy there. And here's Mashima celebrating 50 chapters. Look at how happy everyone is, despite the the overwhelming dread at the end of the last chapter. So Urza orders a retreat here because they're no match for four S-class wizards, a dragon slayer, and then a wizard saint without their own master to guide them. And Natsu's pissed off. He's like, no, we shouldn't retreat. We got to keep fighting. We almost got him. 
And Urza's like, no, that's an order. So essentially, she's pretty much second in command here because, well, Loxus is a no-show, Mystigan's a no-show, Gildarts is a no-show, and Urza is in command here. So she tells them all to leave, and for better or for worse, and Natsu's completely pissed off. If any more friends are hurt, you'll be blasted into ashes. And then it cuts over to Phantom Lord's headquarters. Now, also, they mentioned that Phantom Lord, this is their headquarters here, they have a guild that's relatively close to, um, to Fairy Tales Guild in Fury, but they also have 50 other guilds. So they're a pretty big organization in compared to Fairy Tale, who only has one guild hall. So here's Phantom Lord Guildmaster Jose Porla. Just look at this dude. So essentially here, he, he's saying that we, we have orders to capture you under your father. Because they mentioned that she's the daughter of the famous Hartfilia family, who's a very rich family. And uh, that, there's, uh, I guess, Lucy there back in the day when she was in the Hartfilia estate. And that's her father right, th right there. And basically, he's going to hold Lucy captive until Lucy's father gives him enough money. And Lucy's like, no, I'm never going back there. I'm never going back to that house. She was a runaway. That's why she came to Fairy Tale. And basically, you know, this is a pretty funny scene, too, to break the, the tension. She's like, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and and she, the dude summons the bucket. All right, I'll just use the bucket. Are you really going to use that? <laughs> I got his face. So then he, he leaves in a huff, and he turns his back while she's going to use the bathroom. And she goes right for his nuts. <laughs> you got to love how they, like, mess up the whole tense scene there and to make it all jokey. And then she does a little wink. And actually looks out of the, the tower here, and then thinking about her father once again, she, I guess something must, must have been really terrible of her relationship with her father, and she decides to jump. And Joe's is like, what? What are you doing? Look how he falls. Natsu! And as she's falling, her boy Natsu's there to save the day. You gotta love that. How the hell was he there in that, uh, that perfect timing, right? And then Happy's like, oh, it's raining Lucy's. And Natsu says, you know, how did you know that? She said, I just had a feeling. Of course she just had a feeling. And of course she was captured, didn't really know what the hell happened. All she remembers was the, the guild being destroyed and, and Levy, Jet, and Troy being captured. And Natsu reveals that Makarov's power has been drained. And she's like, I, I'm going to stay in the guild. I love you guys. I love Fairy Tale." And she's crying. And it's like, what the hell? Why are you, why are you crying? Uh, obviously Natsu doesn't know the truth about how she left with her... Uh, her father or whatever. That witch got me mad. So also take note that this, all the chapters have little bios about all the characters here. I love Elfman here. Manliness. Because when he was doing an attack earlier, that's all he said. Man, I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a real man. So then it cuts over here to yet another new character inside Magnolia's Woods. And this is the healing wizard, Porly Yusika. So she's tending to Makarov here. And she's, you know, she has a relationship with him as well. She looks like an old lady. Mm, that old man, he's all... All brawn and no brains in his old age. So she mentioned that it could be a long time for him to be properly healed because all his magic power was drained and, you know, there's no telling what we can do because he has immense magic power, of course. So then she says, why are you two still here? Get out of here. I hate, I hate humanity. <laughs> like, what's her problem? She hates humanity. But anyway, also being she's going to heal the master and then it cuts over to the guild and everyone's just in shambles all wrapped up. You know, they fought a decent battle, but as soon as Gajiel entered the fray, they were no match. And they don't really know what to do here. And, and then Lucy's just crying. It's like, oh, it's all my fault. They captured me, and I put everyone at risk. I caused the master's demise. I hurt Lu uh, Levy and everyone else. And then Nazi's like, no, this is your home, Lucy. You're from Fairy Tale. We're going to stick together and, and save the day. So then, again, it's cutting to everybody. And Khan is reading the, the fortunes, and she says, well, sounds like uh, thunder's coming this way. And Mira Jane is talking to Loxus in this lacrima here, which is a communication device. And she's like, you know, we got to ask you for help, you know. Uh, you're, basically, also, we learned that Makarov is Loxus's grandfather. And she says, come on, won't you avenge your grandfather? The old fart finally got it. Ha ha. Do it yourself. The whole thing has got nothing to do with me. And yeah, she mentions we can't find Mist again. So everyone's leaving him high and dry. And they ask Loxus for help, and he refuses. So, what a, what a complete ass. <laughs> and then his condition here is, is he'll help if, if Lucy, you know, 
she'll be his woman or whatever. <laughs> what an ass. And so he breaks the lacrima and, and Mira's crying and it sucks. So then it cuts to a sexy sh shower scene here of Urza and she's like, oh, the wounded, it's all my fault. How pitiful am I? I'm, I'm not a worthy S-class wizard. And then they hear this rumbling and it's actually one of Phantom Lord's guilds on, you know, it's, it's like a mech, the six-legged mole guild Phantom Lord. And Jose is there saying, we got to prepare the magical cannon Jupiter. Eliminate them. So he's got this giant-ass cannon fire, ready to fire away on Fairy Tail. And Urza comes out in her, her towel, <laughs> and she starts re-quipping there. And to protect the guild, she re-quips into this purgatory armor, I think it's called. Or adamantine armor, I think that's what it's called. So she says, you will not harm the guild! Urza, what are you doing? And as the beam fires its way, everyone's looking in shock. They're all about to be disintegrated. And Urza gets this adamantine shield where she blocks the blast here of her giant armor and shield. And it you know leaves her in shambles too. Her armor is, is melted away and was able to stop the blast. But she's completely drained of magic power now. And Jose, look at the bane coming out of his face there. I want Lucy Harfilia handed over and I want her now. Hand her over. So, look at Urza here. If it's hand over a friend or die, then I choose to die. And all the guild members are like, no, we're not handing Lucy over. She's our family now. You can't do this. So then Jose screaming at the, the top of his lungs. I'll give you 15 more minutes. That's what it takes to repower the Jupiter Blast. If you don't hand her over in 15 minutes, you'll all die. And then he sends these phantom, well, essentially little phantoms after him. You'll be killed by my troops or you'll kill my Jupiter. Yeah. So Natsu comes up with a plan to go inside the Jupiter cannon and disable it from within, whereas all the other guild members are going to defend Lucy here. And Lucy, or excuse me, Mira knocks out Lucy and gives her to Redis, who uses picture magic so he can paint things on his stomach there and, and summon them. So he summons this horse and carriage to take Lucy away. And Mira, using her magic, is actually able to take the form of Lucy, willing to sacrifice herself for her own friend. So meanwhile, Natsu and Happy are making their way inside the Jupiter cannon when they come in contact with the final member of the Element Four, Tatamaro of the Great Flame. So you got a fire dragon slayer up against a fire wizard. And all the heroes of Fairy Tail are making their last stand. You have these two, uh, Biska and Alzac, who are using gun magic. This guy, Max, uses sand magic. You have Kana using her card magic. Everyone's doing what they can. And Natsu's ready to fight this dude. And, you know, <laughs> basically his magic is no use because he's going up against a fire wizard. And the Jupiter Blast is getting ready to, to go again. And actually Natsu eats the, <laughs> the blast. <laughs> you gotta love that. So like, like we learned before, he can eat his own element. He can eat fire. And, and by doing that, you know, it's no match. So he's getting ready to use what, what appears to be the fire dragon roar, but it turns out to just be fire dragon spit. He spits right on Totomaro's face. And <laughs> it's just like going back and forth with a little bit of gag humor. And eventually Natsu's over to overcome by overwhelming the Jupiter cannon itself. So they defeat the cannon and it cuts over to everyone here. That's our Natsu. He's able to save the day. Next, it's your turn to get crushed, Phantom. So Jose's completely pissed off here. Uh, he was told the news that the Jupiter Cannon was destroyed. Those uppity brats, how dare they? And now, the Jupiter Cannon takes a new form here, ready for the guild's ultimate weapon. The super mega giant Phantom NK-11. <laughs> what the hell? And it's got like all these blasters. It's got hands now. What is going on here? So they have all these different contingencies. And as we learned in the past, Natsu has severe motion sickness. And now the guild is moving. And just look at his face. He's going to throw up. <laughs> and tell tomorrow, this guy gets motion sickness really bad. <laughs> what the hell? So then, just in the nick of time, Gray, Happy, and Elfman show up. And they're picking on him like, oh, real man wouldn't get motion sickness. <laughs> That's what Elfman says. <laughs> and they're there to back him up. 
And as all our other heroes are, are trying to make a last stand, you got Macau joining the fight now. And Urza, she's in the infirmary now because, you know, she took that blast head on and we learned she can't use her, her magic powers anymore. So Mira, in the form of, of Lucy, says, you're after me, here I am. Take me back and stop the attack right now. And Jose sees right through it. You imposter. We knew from the start that Lucy was in the guild. Nobody would leave the target of the attack in the front lines. And... This guy, Soul, shows up ready to, to do battle with Elfman now. And Mira's crying. Everyone's defeated now because the guy's ready for his next attack. And he knows that Lucy's not in the guild, that they've, you know, moved her because Mira is the decoy. And now we get Elfman ready to attack. And Soul here can use the earth magic, so he's able to sort of entrap Elfman and his attacks aren't really doing much. And he, he reveals a bit of Elfman's past here, how... Some time ago, he tried to do a full body takeover. That's why he can only you know, do a takeover for one arm. And he failed. And he had a younger sister. You know, his, his other sister, his older sister is Mira, but apparently he had a younger sister named Lasana. And she actually died because he did the full body takeover, which he couldn't control. And he murdered her in that fit of rage. So he's bringing back the past here. And that's Lasana right there. And uh, he, he's just... He's just breaking him right now because he's getting flashbacks to these horrible memories which he tried to forget. And he sees, as he's fighting Soul here, that Mira Jane has been captured. And he's thinking, oh no, now my older sister's going to die. It's going to be my fault too. And he sees that she's crying. No, don't let my sister cry. This can't happen. Who's making you cry? And at this point, again, it's showing a flashback to a young elfman. That's Mira Jane right there. You see like her new hairdo. She does the, the little thing up there. And there's young Lasana. And because of that, the rage seeing his other sister possibly going to die, he, he does a full body transformation. The full body takeover, be soul! And look at him, he's got like horns and everything ready to attack. And he whoops soul into shape and gets his sister free. And he says, I'm so sorry, sis. You never wanted to see this creature again, did you? And it was because I couldn't control it, that Lasana. But you kept your reason. But this was the only way I could think of to protect you and Fairy Tail. I had to get stronger. And she says, It wasn't your fault that Lasana died. Even then, you were doing your best to protect us. So, really great scene right there. And very tragic. And it's, it's, it's great that we see a, a lesser character like Elfman, who sort of has been a background character up to this point, getting fleshed out more. And you learn that he had a tragic past, that he had another sister who died at his hands because he couldn't control his magical power. And you see why he's doing the compensation for him yelling, I'm a man, I'm a man, because he wasn't a man back then, and he, was able, he, he, he wasn't able to protect his sister. You see, you see how broken he is and the true feelings he really has for his family. And that's like the overall theme for this series. It's all about family, protecting your family, loving your family, and, and doing whatever you can to, to make sure that their future is, is in the right hands. So, again, we got our, our forces on the front line of what's going on, and... and I guess Maka has an eye patch now. <laughs> and just fighting and well, Nachi makes his way to Arya here, who is the one who drained uh Maka out of all his magical power. He's the strongest of the element four. And then Grey comes in contact with with the with Juvia, the Rainmaker. So I'm gonna go head to head in the next volume here. And <laughs> you see with Juvia, she starts blushing. So, I don't know, she thinks Grey's a little cute here. And you see her have her internal dialogue. Ah, oh, Juvia, whatever can be wrong, my heart beats so, I want it to make him mine. <laughs> so, and a, a, as she attacks Grey, he starts bleeding, because he still has his wound from his battle with Leon. And she's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I hurt him. Ah. And again, you see her like blushing. He froze it and broke it open. Juvia thought that her water lock could never be broken. He and I... Ice and water, could it possibly be fate? The thump, the thumps, our hearts beating fast. Why does he tear off his clothes so? I don't believe I'm ready for this. <laughs> Ice make lance! And of course his attacks don't really do much because Juvia is one with water and essentially her body is water so she can uh, dodge his attacks pretty easily. So they have a pretty good battle back and forth. And then he mentions that, you know, Lucy's one of us. And 
<laughs> this scene. A rival in love. Juvia cannot accept, cannot forgive. Juvia cannot allow Lucy to live. <laughs> and she turns into boiling water and it ends right there to be continued. So, like I said, great story. Here's some more fan art. Uh, here's some, wow, this is like from the staff doing really nice art right there of, of everybody. And, uh, you know, some Q&A going on here. And some, some more stuff about Elfman's past and uh, young Mira Jane and Masana. And here's a little side story with, with Happy doing, <laughs> doing a job and uh, they're all working in a restaurant, right? And, and, and Lucy's, they're not getting enough customers for the old lady. So Lucy's like, oh, I, let me just fault my stuff. That'll bring in all the customers. <laughs> Here's everyone's eyes. And, and <laughs> you know, I can't believe how many times she does this. And then the, <laughs> the owner takes her clothes off and everyone runs away. And, <laughs> and then Happy starts doing, yeah. So the old lady does that as well. So then, uh, and afterward from Mashima, where he talks about, uh, you know, what, what they do with the staff and what he likes to do for hobbies. He, you know, coffee and cigarettes. He likes to watch movies, play games, and gets plenty of sleep. So, fun little afterwear. But I really enjoyed this story, just the fact that we fleshed out more of the lesser characters, such as Elfman, Mira Jean, and Lasana, who died. And, you know, I thought that was great, seeing more backstory about Elfman, uh, essentially, this story is, is following Lucy's backstory and her tragic past of her father is what I'm getting at it so far. And uh, it's been cool seeing the fights we, we've seen so far. You have these two have been defeated. And in the next volume, we have Natsu going up against Arya. And then Grey going up against Juvia, who appears to have some sort of feelings for him. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And stay tuned for my review of Volume 8 coming soon. Have a great day, everybody.